So we are PDIS team and it goes as product discovery and integration services. And what we do here is we are developing microservices to expose APIs for other developers to use to build their applications. So for doing that, we are like using microservice architecture to get the information they currently Cisco have in a monolithic system and provide them as APIs for other developers. That's right, cool. So what are we going to talk about today? So we are going to share our experience. Uh, how did we do that? Like how we uh, bro broke down the monolithic system to microservice architecture and how you can do it in your application development. Cool. So what's the approach that you use to break down um, the data from the monolithic system and expose it? Maybe. Okay, so what we did, like, the thing is like there is no specific way defined, like this is the way to define microservices in your system, right? So, and we can't do it in a one step, like we currently have a monolithic system and we need to come up with a microservice architecture, my, microservices architecture based system. You mean you have to break it down, you can't do it all at once? Yeah, we can't do it once, right? So, there's like existing applications based, like depending on the monolithic system, current system, we can't like shut them out, shut them down at once and ask them to move into microservice architecture and use that. So what we have to do is like we have to like pick one by one and like break it down gradually to come up with the whole system. So what we did was like we had to identify what are the domains specifically we need at the first cut and uh, what are the like boundaries we need to define like how these domains are need to uh, like interact with others are the applications right so we had to define what are the like identify actually what are the domains we need to expose and what are the applications what are the services we have to define so for doing that we like uh, uh, we followed the one approach called domain driven design so maybe ishan can like talk it with you yeah. Tell me about um, exactly how you guys executed our domain driven, driven design. Uh, so when it's come to domain driven design, it advocates uh, the mostly based on the reality of the business, which is uh, much related to its use cases. So when it's the context of domain driven design, so we talk about the problems as domains. So once we identified a specific independent problem, so it will be bounded to a specific context. So while being on the specific context, we will develop the microservice. So the thing is... Can you give me an example of some of these uh, different contexts? Uh, different contexts mean in the context of Cisco. So when it's come to Cisco, we all know that it's a food service provider. So right. when it's come, let's say there's a customer and he just uh, created a uh, transaction and the invoice was generated. So we have to maintain the invoices. So in the context of maintaining invoices, in maintaining invoice service will be one context. So let's say there are, you have some products. So you have to maintain the products. Products names is there are more details about the products. So, so like products should be one domain and customer invoices would be another domain. Yeah, another domain. So we have to identify the domains and the other main thing is the other main thing that we have to pay attention is those domains should be substantial. So let's say there are some domains that they doesn't have a value to the business. So once you identify a domain, it should give a value to the business. So, uh, if, if let's say you just created, a, you just identified a domain which is not much significant and you just created a microservice, then it will be useless because once you created a, a microservice, it should add the value to the business. So, it should make the process much easier and the customer, consumer should be able to use it uh, with a comfortable way. So, the other thing when you are defining uh, domains is uh, you have to define domains uh, which which is uh, which does a, which have a value of significant value so unless uh, it will be uh, useless uh, when you are defining domains just like that so you're creating like a list of priorities like you're prioritizing the different domains yeah, and yeah, seeing yeah. which ones exactly you want to and the other thing is so once we are defining domains those domains have a relative scale as well let's say you are just you let's say the system is going to different different domains and you are creating a huge domain you are just uh, defining a huge domain and you are g going with a microservice so then it will be again a uh, problem as well so the other thing is once you are defining domains it will be relatively scalable as well so that domain should have a relative scale so let's say there is no need to define huge domains and go through with the microservices architecture because what we are doing with the microservices architecture is we are creating single single units and those single un from those single units we are making the system much easier so right. that's why so, yeah, what you're saying is say this is going to customer domain you 
break them down into like orders and invoices. <laughs> like you break down the larger business area into smaller domains. Yeah, yeah. So we have we can have a customer domain, we can have order domain, we can have invoice domain, just like that. We will let's say uh, the huge order process. We did the huge order process, order is there, invoice is there, customer maintenance is there, all, those, all are there. So we can make them into different different small domains and we can make the microservice architecture which is much better. So why don't you tell me about some of the techniques that you use to so, execute uh, the domain development? Yeah, so when it comes to the context of uh, our development, so we are moving from a monolithic environment to a uh, modernized environment. So in the context of that, uh, we use two specific uh, techniques. So one is open host pattern and the other one is ACL, that anti-corruption layer. So when it comes to open host pattern, so the already existing monolithic system is already there. So we are exposing the uh, already existing monolithic system as endpoints uh, which returns JSON data. So our consumers will be able to access those uh, uh, monolithic uh, data via endpoints. So, and the other thing is anti-corruption layer pattern. So, anti-corruption layer means ACL pattern. That means, let's say now uh, monolithic system is already there and we are modernizing it. So, we can't just uh, get it from that monolithic system suddenly. So, it will get much time. So, we have to modernize our application and it will get much time. Because of that, we are creating a big bridge over uh, modern. Uh, what is the monolithic environment and our microservice architecture as well because let's say there are some applications already in the monolithic system and they are also is, is a process of consuming and those uh, newly mod uh, modernizing applications are also in the, in the process of consuming so because of that those data should be synchronized so those newly applications newly building applications should also use those data as well so there should be synchronizations happens so we are doing it uh, just like scheduled jobs scheduled jobs will be there so from that uh, we are synchronizing data from the legacy environment to our microservice so it will be happen with the time and this bridge will be removed once we uh, move from the uh, monolithic environment to the uh, modernized environment completely but this not will be uh, done uh, recently it will get some time to remove this bridge and uh, uh, completely come into the microservices architecture. So that's what uh, patterns that we are using. Right. So the anti-corruption layer, the bridge and? Anti-corruption layer means the bridge and the other one is open host pattern. Right. Let's say when it's come to one single domain, that single domain will be used by different different applications. Mm. So because of that our, microser our microservice should be able to support all those applications. So because of that, that's why we are taking as in enterprises because we are using uh, API standards and using those API standards, uh, we will uh, develop those uh, microservices. So all the consumers which are going to use that particular same domain will be able to access via our microservice. Because so you are following the same API standards. Yeah, because of that, microservice should have those standards and should be able to uh, give those supports to all the consumers. Cool. cool. Um, what kind of technologies can you use to execute an architecture like this? Yes, uh, there are a set of uh, tools and technologies that involve in from a development to a delivery of a microservice. So first I'm going to talk about the technology selection for a microservice. A uh, microservice can be implemented in any modern programming language to run on different infrastructures. And uh, this selection varies based on how a microservice communicates, whether it is synchronous or asynchronous, and also what protocol it, it's, it is going to use, like whether it's a REST or messaging. And uh, if you take a microservice architecture, there are uh, common architectural components such as uh, API gateway, load balancer, uh, service discovery, the microservice, and the database related to that uh, microservice. So once we develop a microservice, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, required to document the design and the, uh, uh, design and the architecture of that microservice. So we have several tools to uh, document our microservice. Service. If our microservice is exposing an API, we can document the response structures and the request bodies using Swagger. So it is for a developer, it is very sorry, easy. Swagger. Okay. Swagger is a tool that developers can integrate into their development environment and generate the documentations for their APIs that they are developing. So another key factor in microservices is the CI/CD pipeline. In order to achieve the success with the microservices, we need to have CI/CD pipelines integrated with our microservices. So CI/CD pipelines that is continuous integration and continuous development. This uh, this can be uh, designed using many modern uh, tools such as GoCD, uh, Jenkins. Uh, if you take a CI/CD pipeline, there are like several steps that comes to uh, each uh, project. 
in the context of a microservice, uh, first what we do is we build the code, we pull our source code from our code repositories like GitHub or GitLab. Then we develop, uh, build our code, uh, installing all the new dependencies, and then we can execute our test or the static code analysis with Sona Cube, and then we can upload those uh, results to a dashboard where everyone can see. And then uh, we can deploy our microservices into different containers uh, using Docker. So what unique about the containers is these are lightweight containers which you can easily create, deploy and copy. So if we take an enterprise level microservice, we know that we need more than one environment like dev environment, QA, stage and prod environment. So with containers, this could be achieved very easily like because containers can be, can be copied from one en environment to another environment very easily. And uh, so once our microservice is running on an environment, we need to continuously monitor and see how it's working. So we need to maintain logs as well. So we can maintain two types of logs like access logs and service logs. So, and, and again, not only storing is storing logs is not enough. We need to uh, view the logs in an organized way. For that, we have a tool called Splunk, where you can uh, search and uh, view the logs in an organized way. And uh, I think these are most of the modern technologies that we used in uh, microservices. Even in our PJS uh, team, we are making use of uh, these tools every day. Cool. And then what we are saying about automation? So the things like when we are like developing microservices, so everything need to be automated. So we can't like uh, do like everything manually, like developing to like deploying to dev environment, executing the test and going to the queue environment. Those stuff need to be automated. Make test execution to like checking out the code errors, like like in including Sona queue or something like that. So we could identify bugs and any issues. So these things need to be automated. We can't do it manually in microservices. Develop when we are developing microservices. Right. Seems like they are like we had to develop a bunch of microservices, right? So maybe like eight to ten microservices per, per team. Yeah. So what it happens like we can we had to do multiple releases in frequent time. So we can't like do man, engage in manual testing or manual stuff since everything need to be happen very frequently. Right. Everything need to be automated. So may the better you had the automated suit, it will better the performance of the team. Right. Cool. Anything else? Any other tips? Yeah. And uh, yeah. the API standards is the yeah. other thing. So yeah. the thing is, uh, we have to follow the API standards because Cisco has uh, given their API standards. What? What the API standards that we should follow. So because of that, once we are developing microservices and once we are exposing endpoints to our consumers, those endpoints should be with the standards. So we define the standards and these are the Cisco standards and our consumers should be able to consume that. So we are not developing, we are not depending on our consumers. Our consumers are depending on us. Because of that, we define all the endpoints, all the services according to the standards. And once we define our consumers also will be able to use it in a very comfortable manner because we are not just varying it to one consumer to another consumer. As we have defined the standards, they will also go with our followers. And another thing would be like we had to be like consistent. We have to be consistent, consistent over the microservices. So every microservices need to be like, act as same. Like they should follow the same one standard. So one service will be developed by another team, and one service will be can be developed by other team. But the core attributes of a service need to be unique among the services. Right. Otherwise, uh, consumers who are going to consume multiple services have to like look into the each and every service like differently so they will if they act differently so they have to the application developers uh, will face many problems right so you need to make sure everything is consistent around services and you are like giving up to one system with a uh, like unique standard something like right that. even when you're working with like uh, synchronous and asynchronous data, and even, yeah. even when there's variations in the different domains, you still yeah. have to maintain. Yes, yeah, so that depends on the service requirements. Like uh, based on the requirement, we can decide what kind of approach we're gonna take, and uh, so that could be varies based on the scenario and the requirements. But the maintaining the consistency is uh, necessary within right. the microservice and 
within the microservices that we develop at our team. Cool. All right. Thank you guys for sharing your knowledge and wisdom. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Awesome. It was a good discussion. <laughs>